Typical food and drink in Scotland. Today we'll be looking at some traditional Scottish food and some other foods in Scotland that are not quite so traditional and might surprise you. Okay, enjoy. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. So this week we're going to talk about traditional Scottish foods or the typical kind of food that you find in Scotland. As you'll see, I'm joined with some things that are representative of Scottish food, so we'll go more to that later when we're discussing. Um, okay, so this topic is quite difficult for me because we do have a lot of traditional Scottish foods, um, but because we've had a lot of immigration as well, um, the food that I'm used to and what I've been brought up with is like a fusion of different kinds of foods. But first of all, we're going to focus on the very kind of traditional meals that you find in Scotland. The most famous Scottish food is haggis. Um, I don't know if some of you have heard about it. Um, so let's look at what haggis is. In the first photo you can see haggis on its own. Haggis is made from the sheep's stomach, mixed with oats and onion. In the second photo you see haggis, neeps and tatties. Neeps, neeps are turnips, tatties are potatoes. And then in the last photo it's also haggis, neeps and tatties, but a posh version. Okay. So that was haggis. Um, as you saw, haggis usually comes with neeps and tatties, which we know are turnip and potato. Um, although haggis is the most well-known and recognised traditional Scottish dish, people in Scotland tend to only really eat it on special occasions. So that could be just a couple of times per year. Um, for example, on January the 25th, we celebrate Burns Night. So Burns Night is a celebration of a very famous Scottish poet called Robert Burns. So if you're interested in looking at his poems, um, you can search his name, Robert Burns. Although I will warn you that it's not in English, it's in Scots, so it could be quite difficult. So on that Burns Night celebration, um, people tend to eat haggis, neeps and tatties and do other kind of traditional Scottish things. However, throughout the rest of the year, haggis really isn't that popular, which you may find strange. Um, okay, let's look at other um, some other types of traditional Scottish food now. We have Scottish porridge oats, potato scones and a soup which is called Cullen Skink. So you'll see porridge or oatmeal as it's also known as eaten all around the world. But they do say that it originated in Scotland and Scottish people have been eating porridge for thousands of years. Um, the other thing we looked at, potato scones. Um, is simply potato and flour crushed together and then fried and typically eaten um, with other breakfast foods or on its own with maybe some bread. It's delicious, I love it. Um, it's a bit different but maybe it could be similar to arepa. It, it could be a, um, a similar dish. Um, and the last one, cullen skink. I must admit I've never eaten that because I'm vegetarian and it does contain fish. That could be like the Scottish ahiaco. Um, it has smoked haddock, um, potatoes and onion and people tend to eat that in the winter when it's quite cold. Um, okay, so this, the Cullen Skype contains fish which is important as we'll see next that as we are on an island Scotland produces a lot of fish and a lot of our traditional meals um, contain seafood or fish. Let's have a look. Here we have Scottish salmon, a fish supper and fresh lobster. So as you just saw, in Scotland, a lot of the traditional dishes contain fish um, or seafood. Um, as an island, um, we, we do a lot of fishing and of course, well, this is part of our diet. Um, we also export a lot of our fish and seafood to, to other European countries, typically Spain. So as you saw, some of the dishes are, are very nice, quite fancy, like the salmon or, or lobster. And others are a bit more unhealthy, like the fish and chips. Um, that, that in Scotland's known as a fish supper. Um, it's a typical dish all around the UK. I think many of you will know that. Um, and so you might have heard it as fish and chips, but in Scotland we refer to it as a fish supper. Um, okay, now let's look at some of the desserts or puddings as we call it, that come from Scotland. We have cranachan, shortbread and tablets. Okay, so we just looked at um, some of the typical sweet dishes from Scotland or, or puddings. Um, the first one, shortbread, is really delicious. Um, this was actually originally shortbread inside, but I just wanted to show you the little box. Um, of course, I've eaten it all, so inside there's no longer shortbread. Shortbread is just made from um, sugar, butter and flour, and it's really nice. And it's usually accompanied, um, or 
you accompany it with tea or, or coffee or something like that. Um, the other one, Kranikin, is a really delicious dessert as well, which is made with oats, cream, raspberries, um, a little bit of whiskey, if you would like as well. And the last one, Tablet, is a dish that um, usually people's grannies make, their grandmothers. And again, that's made from sugar, condensed milk and and butter, I think, which is really good. Now let's look at a very infamous dessert from Scotland, which is called the deep fried Mars bar. So it's a chocolate bar that is deep fried. You can get a normal version, or as you can see in the right, a gourmet version as well. Okay, that was the infamous deep fried Mars bar. There's a stereotype, usually from the English, that Scottish people eat deep fried Mars bars all the time. That's not true. I've, ha I've eaten them like two or three times in my life, and of course they're very unhealthy, but very delicious as well. Okay, now I'll just explain a couple of things that are here on the table. So this cock I have, um, you can see in the photo, is a type of Scottish bread, which is a little bit different and very delicious. Let's have a little look at a photo. Okay, that is the bread and it's very good and it's only produced in Scotland. Um, okay, if you remember at the start of the video, I said sometimes it's difficult to talk about traditional Scottish food because we now nowadays have a fusion and have been influenced by immigration. This explains why I have a jar of curry paste here. Um, the UK has a, a long history with India due to it being a former colony and things. So in the UK, there's been a lot of immigration from India and of course they brought their food, delicious food. Um, however, some of the the Indian dishes that you find in the UK were actually created in Britain. Especially this, the tikka masala. There's a debate whether it was created in Glasgow or I think in Manchester, but let's just say it was created in Scotland. Um, so some curries as well um, are part of the Scottish and British cuisine in general. And finally, just to go back when I spoke about the fish supper or the fish and chips, in Scotland they were always produced and made and sold by the Italians who emigrated to Scotland at the end of the 19th century and owned the fish and chip shop. Okay, I just want to finish to mention a couple of famous drinks in Scotland. A soft drink is Iron Brew, which is kind of like Columbiana. Tastes similar and looks the same. Um, it's very popular, maybe even more popular than Coke. And of course, as everyone knows, whiskey. In Scotland, we produce a lot of whiskey um, and export, export whiskey all over the world. Um, I don't actually really like whiskey, but I've heard that the whiskey from Scotland is the best. Um, okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, you've learned some new things. Again, if you have any comments or any questions, then please comment below in the video. Okay, bye.